quickly going to explain intermolecular forces because it's such an important topic for our grade 11s as well as our grade 12s. Intermolecular forces uh, is something that we actually start with in grade 10 when we look at the heating curve of water. So the first thing to remember here is that when we have molecules, it indicates to us that there's a specific interatomic force known as a covalent bond. Now what's the difference between intermolecular and interatomic? Inter means between two things. So if you go on an international flight, you're flying between two nationalities or two nations. Intermolecular forces exist between molecules. Molecules have covalent bonds in them, the sharing of electrons between non-metals. So a covalent bond is an example of an interatomic force. When we look at covalently bonded molecules, we know that sometimes there's an even distribution of electrons and sometimes an uneven distribution of electrons. So when we have an uneven distribution of electrons, those molecules will be polar, which means that there is a permanently positive side and permanently negative side to the molecule. An example of this would be water. Then if we look at molecules with an even distribution of electrons, they are nonpolar. And a good example here would be all of our diatomic gases like hydrogen or oxygen. I'm going to use CO2 just to illustrate the point here. So when we look at the forces that exist between molecules of H2O, remember this is a polar molecule. The forces between one H2O molecule and another H2O molecule are called dipole-dipole forces. I'm going to abbreviate it as dipole, dipole, DDF. Don't ever use these abbreviations in your tests and exams, but just as a way of just um, making it easy to remember. Then if we look at the forces that exist between nonpolar molecules, like between one CO2 molecule and another CO2 molecule, this is called induced dipole forces. Now, induced dipole means that, remember, a nonpolar molecule has an even distribution of charge, which means that there's an even portion of electrons everywhere, and therefore we know that there's no positive or negative side. But when all these molecules are moving constantly, sometimes it does happen that on the one side of the 1CO2, for example, there are more negative charges. And that induces a dipole in the next CO2 molecule. So it's like you being neutral. Somebody comes close to you, that's negative. Then it makes you negative. But when they leave, you're neutral again. And so they, there is this temporary induction, induction making of a dipole. But then as soon as they move away from each other, the dipole disappears and hence the name induced dipole forces. But we also have mixtures of polar and nonpolar molecules. So what happens if we, for example, have H2O and CO2 mixed? So we're going to take the first part of the name of the force between polar molecules and the first part of the name between nonpolar molecules to come up with a name for polar and nonpolar molecules. It's going to be called dipole-induced dipole forces. So from this side over here, we have the dipole. And from this side over here, we're using induced dipole to come up with this name. Now, all three of these forces that I've just explained collectively are also known as Van der Waals forces. So Van der Waals forces are forces between molecules. I will elaborate a little bit more um, with other names as soon as we're done here. Another type of interatomic bond that we have is ionic bonding. You might remember from grade 10 that ionic bonding occurs when we have electrostatic forces of attraction between ions, anions and cations. So I'm going to use Na plus and Cl minus here just as an example of a, an ionic substance. The force that exists between an ion and a polar covalent molecule is called ion dipole forces. And the forces that exist between ions and nonpolar molecules will be called ion induced dipole forces. So we see the repetition here of the words for polar 
iron dipole and for nonpolar induced dipole. And then we just add the word iron in front of it. Now iron dipole forces and iron induced dipole forces are not Van der Waals forces. We also sometimes hear people talking about uh, the Van der Waals forces and specifically these uh, induced dipole forces, they use different names. So you might hear people talk about London forces or dispersion forces, or sometimes I've even heard London dispersion. So whenever anybody talks about induced dipole forces, you can also use London forces, London dispersion forces to explain that. Then we're also going to look at a very special type of dipole-dipole force. It is in fact the strongest dipole-dipole force. It is known as hydrogen bonding. Now, hydrogen bonding occurs between the following molecules. The hydrogen of one molecule and either the nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine of another polar molecule. So typical examples would be between molecules of NH3 or H2O or hydrogen fluoride and also alcohols that have the OH at the end of the molecule. So what we see here is if we take water, for example, we have hydrogen, oxygen and hydrogen sharing electrons. And what we see is on the one side, there's a slightly more negative side, the dipole, and on the other side, a slightly more positive side here where we have our hydrogen. So what happens is when there is another water molecule, we see that the slightly positive side of this molecule is going to form a bond with the oxygen of another water molecule. And this bond over here between these molecules we call a hydrogen bond. Very important, this strong bond accounts for the fact that water doesn't evaporate too easily and that makes, makes life on our planet possible actually. So this is a summary of the intermolecular forces and ion dipole, ion induced dipole forces that you need to know for grade 11 to be successful and go and practice some examples and answer exam questions. You're welcome to comment on the video and um, I will elaborate in other videos on those examples.